another day, another podcast. In two days' time, provided you are listening to this on release day, I will be in Nashville, Tennessee, recording six episodes of your favourite podcast with your favourite guests. And by favourite guests, I mean I hope they are your favourite guests. One of which, most requested guest ever, possibly. One returning guest, and then a whole slew of, I mean a slew, is four a slew? A, a slew of four other guests. How on earth did I pay for that? Well, the lovely people at patreon.com forward slash the downbeat, they give me one pound, right? And what I do with that money is I invest it back into the podcast. I pay Simon the editor. What up, Simon? Shout out, Simon. You can leave that in, Simon. I pay for a flight and an Airbnb to do a lovely slew, and it is a slew. Six is a slew. I'm, I'm going to call it there. Of, I don't, I don't even, I can't even remember what I'm talking about. I'm doing a slew in Nashville, right? Patreon's paying for it. They also pay for this lovely camera that you might be watching, or they actually, nah, they didn't pay for this lovely microphone because Rode, little shout out to Rode there, gave me that for free, which is nice of them. Should probably plug them. It's the same microphone as ever. I've plugged them before. I've paid for that. If anything, they should be paying me more. How am I going to afford to buy Nashville hot chicken and Tennessee bourbon when I'm out there? Well, some people go to www.thedownbe.at, so it spells downbeat, and they buy a sweatshirt like I'm wearing now, or maybe they buy a T-shirt like I'm wearing underneath this sweatshirt. That money goes directly to me, into my pocket. None of it goes to Simon. None of it goes to cameras. None of it goes... Well, some of it goes to Nashville. It's very expensive. And then I can buy chicken in Nashville. Before I tell you about our lovely, lovely guest today, and all of these plugs, if you hate this bit, I'm really sorry. It is getting more and more elaborate. Let me tell you about the sponsor of today's podcast. As ever, it is Display. What is a Display? A Display is a metal poster that you affix to the wall with a magnet. Craig, are you like a caveman or like a dumb idiot person who still uses paper posters or cardboard posters or those laminated posters that you got from a market when you were like 13 of like nudie ladies and stuff? No, I'm not because I use disc plates. They're made of metal, okay? They attach with a magnet. They're in the background of the podcast studio. They're in the background of the Nashville Airbnb. Do not tell the person that I loaned the Airbnb off. Wait. You could tell them because, you know what? The magnet, the safety thing, all of that comes straight off the wall without any holes drilled. Airbnb person doesn't need to know anything about it. For every one that you buy or I buy, display plants a tree. I believe they've done millions of trees by now. That's a forest. Ironically, some of those trees may later be used to make inferior paper posters, but I, I don't know the logistics of that. Go to www.displate.com. Use the code DOWNBEAT to get 22% off one to three displays or 30% off three and above. Displate.com. Use the code DOWNBEAT. My guest on the DOWNBEAT podcast this week is Connie Scarboza from See You Space Cowboy. She came in. Let me tell you this, the first guest ever when I, I said, do you want a drink? She said, do you have whiskey? She came in hot from the night before, I believe they were in Ireland. Uh, you know, she had a whiskey. It was about 11 in the morning, respect there. Uh, we talked about, we talked about so much. Super, super knowledgeable person about old school metalcore, mathcore. Uh, the band is great. Sasscore, check them out. We talked about she's a trans woman in the heavy music space, which is you know quite unique. Doesn't define her, but it's quite unique. Some people on sort of punk rock metalcore podcasts would choose to have problematic trans guests on. It's Connie from See You Space Cowboy. She's on the Downbeat podcast. They're going on tour with Nothing Nowhere and Downbeat alumni Static Dress. On September the 5th in the US, they have a new album, Details, TBC, but most of the details are actually in this podcast. Connie from See You Space Cowboy on the Downbeat Podcast. Connie. Hello. I'm going to butcher your second name. Uh. 
It's Scarbosa. Scarbosa. It's Italian. It's such a cool name. Yeah, it's uh, my adoptive father. When uh, he when he came into our lives, I'm like, I went from Smith to Scarbosa, from nice. the most generic last name you could have to the gnarliest one. That's cool. And it, it's like, it sounds like you made it up. No offense. That's what I thought too. It sounds like it's a stage every, name. Yeah, everybody thinks that like it's just like some made up name, or they don't know where it's from, or they spell it with a C instead of a G, but you know, dad's grandpa came from, or my grandpa came from the motherland, just kept the name. Wow. Yeah. Are you doing Italy on this tour? We did. Uh, we played Milan. Was it good? So it was a little less good. So the first time we ever went to Milan, it was really, really sick. Um, it was like the only place we had like spin kicks and shit in the pit. Um, but uh, this time there was a band reuniting the exact same day called Rain yeah. in Venice. So I, I was oh. talking to my homegirl, and she's like, yeah, everybody I know who's a Space Cowboy fan is at this other show. Oh. It was just like the worst luck. Because I was looking forward to it. I'm like, oh, my God, like I love Italy. Like It's a great time. But you win some, you lose some. It's always a, like Italy is always great or kind of sucks. <laughs> just, just because like, uh, so, like sometimes you like, play at like 3 a.m. And it's just a different way of life. Yeah. It's just at 3 a.m. But on the... And sm- can they still smoke indoors in Italy? I haven't been in ages. Uh, no, we were smoking indoors when we were there. I'm not yeah, but, sure. Uh, you're a rock star. Can I just say yeah. this? Number one, <laughs> the first person that's ever come in and when I say, do you want a drink? In, and it's been... Time is here, not to shame you. It's 1, 1 p.m. <laughs> and I've said, do you want a drink? And he went, I'll have a whiskey. <laughs> well, this tour has been like a... Crazy tour. I mean, we were in Belfast last night, and I was just... There was a disco night kind of club thing Love right it. after, and we went to have some drinks at Spoons, and then came back and just went into the club. We're just like, hey, we're going oh, in. They're yeah. like, okay. And then it just turned into a crazy time. Like I told you, slept through the entire ferry ride from Ireland back to here. Perfect. Just... You know, was it just it going. was it Space Cowboy or was it like everyone on the tour package? It was Space Cowboy plus um, some of We Came as Romans, and then caskets were out and about in other places. But nice. <laughs> and it was like, what kind of music were they playing? Probably like Fifty Cent. They were playing oh, like, like real old, club. Yeah, old club hits. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to get hammered. I'm going to have fun tonight. Because why we, did I think you were straight edge? I don't know. Is it because of my Instagram? Oh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I had a little stalk this morning. I was like, I'll oh, see what see what else I can find. And I saw it. Is it like X? It's X. Camu Love Child X. Uh, but yeah, it's but like, I did it as like MySpace. Yeah, MySpace shit, era. But, um, some people get confused about that. I got confused about it. Because <laughs> as I am a MySpace era guy, but I'm also, sometimes there's a straight edge yeah. person here. Yeah. But, you know, now we can talk about getting wrecked. That's fine. And I think the vegan thing as well, I was like, surely. Yeah. How long have you been vegan? Almost six years, I think. Whole band vegan? Uh, So four of us are vegan. One of us is vegetarian. Yeah. So pretty much an all vegan band. Do you bully the veggie? Yes. (laughs) All the time. What's their, what's their like vice? What do they keep? Cheese. (sighs) You know what? Fuck cheese. I I I, I eat meat. I could go without cheese. Yeah, I never liked cheese to begin with. It was the easiest. The hardest thing for me to give up was sushi. I love fish. So like sashimi was the last thing I had to give up before I went fully vegan. I know a lot of people who are vegan except for fish. Mm -hmm. Like they'll just do, they'll do everything. No dairy, no anything, but they let fish slide. There was that that nasty rumor that fish don't care. Yeah. (laughs) See, for me, I got into sashimi and like sushi super late. So, like, literally, I only started eating it a year before I went like fully vegan. And I was like, oh my God. You didn't get your money's worth. Yeah, I didn't. (laughs) But in the Netherlands and now in the States, we have this crazy like sashimi substitute that's so close to the original thing, it blows my mind. Yeah, but what's the. What fish is it trying to emulate? Sam, salmon, but it's no it's, it's it's like it has the marbling in it. It's got it, the look, the taste oh. is almost there. We have some in Glasgow. Yeah, in oh, it's called Rose and Grant. Oh, let me check it. It's still open because it's f- pretty near the venue as well. Um, because that would be a treat for you. My phone's 
broke, so that's not going to sign me. You don't have to edit this. It's just me being <laughs> awful. Rose and Grants, I think it's called. It's like a coffee shop, but it does. Do you know what a, a, a meat pie is? Obviously, you know what yeah, a meat yeah, pie yeah. is. But in Scotland, they do like a, they're called a Scotch pie, and it's a little thing. But they do vegan ones of those, and they do vegan salmon. But I've never, oh. I've seen it, and I've gone, really? But maybe yeah. it's the same stuff. See, for me, the first time in like 2019, first time we ever came to Europe, like we were like very young band still. And um, I, we went to Amsterdam. We had a day off in Amsterdam. It was my like first time in Europe. And not, I was straight like, not straight edge. Not straight edge. Buying mushrooms, doing the whole thing, like smoking cigarettes and drinking espresso in, in buildings kind of vibe. Yeah. But there was a place that had it. And I was like, I can't wait for this to come to the States. And it finally has whatever FDA bullshit said, yeah. okay, it's okay now. And so I have yet to buy it, but I've seen it around. So is this your first UK show of the tour? We what? did Slam Dunk. You did Slam yeah. Dunk? How was Slam Dunk? It was great. It was like fantastic. Because like for me, the UK has saved this band from breaking up. The oh. first time we ever came to Europe, we went on tour. And it was Sea Markets in Germany. In the entire five shows, and like, like I said, we were been a band for a year and a half, I think. We just took the plunge. What year is this, sorry? 2019. And um, we sold one shirt and one CD the entire five-show run. We were in, like, in debt. We're like, I don't know if this is worth it. Yeah. But then we came to the UK and played, like, Upsurge Fest and played well, Glasgow first. Then yeah. played, like, Upsurge Fest. Some of the craziest shows we'd ever played up to that point. So, like, UK saved this band. So, like, any time I could come here and play, I'm like, that's, like, the pinnacle of any Euro UK run. I feel like Stray was the same. Like, everything everywhere was, like, fine. And the UK was, like, double everything. And well, then eventually everything else just yeah, caught up. Well, that was the thing. We literally went from playing to German people who didn't give a fuck about us to all of a sudden upsurge. People, like, the stage is tiny at New Cross Inn, mm. you know. But people were somehow still diving over me onto people, killing each other on the pit. I'm like, all right, this band's worth continuing then. Yeah. Even if we're thousands of dollars in debt because of fucking you Germany. Got, you got to do it. Now you're, how's this tour going for you? It's been great. Like, it's probably been the best Europe tour we've done um, just because it's, it's a little bit smaller rooms and there's – people a little bit more open than other tours we've done here support tours you know yeah. it's a little bit more in our wheelhouse even yeah. though we're still the weird band we'll be the weird band on every tour package we're ever on the only band doing math course shit and grind and whatever and yeah. sassing um but it's been great it's been a great time and being on the bus with we came as romans and caskets like is this your first bus tour? Yes. First time I've the ever been on a bus. The best, isn't it? Yeah, that's great. I'll, like, I could do it forever. Yeah. It's like, I like my thing was like, so we've been on tour with, for three and a half months straight. In the last, At this point? Yes. Wow. In the last seven months, I've only been home for 20 days, cut into two 10-day sections. Fuck. Last seven months. So I was like broken after the Silverstein tour. I was like, I don't know how this is going to go. We got on the bus. Silverstein was in the States? Yeah, in the yeah. States. So in we, a van? Yeah. Which is like fine. It's our van. We got a mattress in there. It's whatever. Yeah. But coming over here, I'm like, if this doesn't go well, <laughs> I'm gonna lose my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First day, it was just like party, like just like everybody's vibing, having a great time. Which is like very different than other support tours I've done, where it's like headliner doesn't talk to anyone, doesn't mm. fuck around with anyone. But like the first day, like Andy from We Came As Rones, like Connie, like nice to meet you, like. Let's walk to this gas station. Let's fucking have a drink, blah, blah, blah. Like, drink, blah, blah, blah. He was sober at the time. Um, and I'm just like, this is sick. Yeah. All the Cascas people sick. All the Weekends Romans people sick. Like, it's just been a great way to be like, help push through that last little bit of like, yeah. you have to fly to Europe and do a tour. When it doesn't feel like work, yeah. that's when it's the best. Exactly. Like, wait, I'm on vacation. Yeah. And it's, like, it's like you said, I'm drinking whiskey at one in the afternoon. There we go. Yeah. You can, like, I don't, if you I want mean, another one halfway yeah. through, we can just press pause and get you another one. I'm actually drinking coffee, guys. I've got a lot on today. This is my last mm -hmm. day. I've got, I think I've had, when did we start that other tour? February? I had, I think I'm, I probably had 25 days off between February and it will be July because I go on tour. I go on tour next Monday, but I've got some work in London tomorrow. 
So I need to like pack yeah. today yeah. for Monday. It's so fucking annoying. Dude, that's how I feel. Like we have an 11 hour flight back to LAX. I'm like, I could have a lot of fun tonight and like fuck off with my responsibilities. Or I could be like, I have to get on a plane for 11 hours tomorrow. It's just, you leave tomorrow? Yes. This is the last day? Yes. This is it. Oh. This is, this Are you is flying it. from Glasgow? Flying from London. Heathrow. Oh my God, that makes no sense. Nope. Well, it's okay. So in normally when we fly back from Europe, we have to like stop and have a five hour layover. Mm. This time it's just like a straight 11 hour flight home. Oh, so the bus is the layover technically, which is actually fucking way better. Yeah, I'm going to just pass out my bunk. Yeah, I feel like you've just got to power through today. Mm. I feel like you've just got to party through the whole day yeah. well, and the evening. Yeah, I mean, I, I said last night was my last big night in Belfast, but it's probably not going to be. I'm going to be running around spilling my drink on people tonight. Do you drink beer? I don't. Does anyone in the band drink beer? Yes. I will give you, I've got a, there's a downbeat margarita sour. I've oh, got, I do love sours. I've got so yeah. much of it, I will give you yeah. a bunch yeah. Take See, it back to the venue. It's funny because Taylor, our bassist, is like an award-winning brewer. Bef- oh, I'd so, love to hear what he thinks. So he joined the band at the beginning. He's the one, me and him started it. He left, went to brewing school, started brewing, and then he came back over the pandemic. Oh. Um, but he's like a crazy about beer. Oh, I'm going to give, I have so much different beer here, including my own beer. I'll give you a little, make you mm. a little selection pack, yeah. bring it back, yeah. share it with the Weed Carers Roman. Last day of tour. Yeah. Because I wish I could come, but I have so much to do. Yeah. I got to bleach my fucking hair. I got, <laughs> you know, the real important shit. I got to mark out my drum rug, get a haircut, <laughs> bleach my hair. That's it. Where are y'all going? Uh, where does it start? It starts, it's festivals, European festivals. Oh, yeah. So, oh, so like, like rock for people, full force, all those yeah, ones. Yeah. They're all like, so next week, my week. It's fucking amazing, actually. I only mean, just thought about it yesterday. My week is it starts obviously we practice in Germany, and then first show is Nova Rock with Slipknot, like same stage as Slipknot. Then the second day after that is Rock for People with Slipknot and Architects yeah. and Lorna Shaw. Then Download with Metallica. Then we do two shows with Meshuggah, and it's like that's crazy. In yeah, in five days, I'm gonna play with three of my favorite yeah. bands of all time. Rock for people is sick. The yeah, little we've done t- it yeah, the little town that they they put you up in when they get you a hotel and stuff. Like, it's an amazing place. Yeah. So I, I want to play that fest just to hang out in that town again. I love a festival tour yeah. for for yeah. hanging out. This will be great. my first festival tour on a bus as well, which yeah. is like. Oh. Yeah, that's like bliss. Yeah, I mean, festivals are great. You meet people. I mean, low key, I th- I feel like we got the service scene tour we did because we met them at Rock for People, and like right. I didn't know, I didn't quite recognize who they were at first. Um, they like offered me like I was looking for whiskey. I was asking everybody, I'm like, where can I get some whiskey? And then um, one of them was like, oh, we have whiskey on our bus. I'm like, cool. Like, oh, what band are you in? Like, Silver Scene. I'm like, oh my god. Like, that's the network. Yeah, that's I'm the- like. I'm like, y- y'all, I love y'all so much. You you do the, a cover of Orchid. You do Destination Blood. Like, we started talking about, like, old, like, emotive, hardcore and screamo bands. And, yeah. like, three weeks later, we got the tour offer from them. I mean, that's them. 100% what happened. That's, I always talk about this, like, in, because I went to music school, like, fucking 20 years ago now. And they always tell you in it, like, oh, and everyone, all of the, like, internet people were like, oh, you got a network. You got a network. <laughs> all this shit. But it's like, Yes, you have to network, but it needs to be 100% real. And yeah, that's yeah. like an example of like, you were looking for whiskey, became a network, then yeah. you got something out of it. The worst is like, if someone listens to this and they now go, yeah. right, I'm going to hunt down Silverstein's bus. I'm going to pretend that I want whiskey to do, <laughs> to do the networking. Well, that's the thing. I want a genuine connection with any like of my like fellow musicians and stuff. It's the same way it was like, so like I used to like, I hang out with a lot of people like in LA from like the SoundCloud rap scene. Like, and I'm, I'm still great friends with all of them, but I'm like, a lot of people will be like, well, like, what's it like, like, partying with all these crazy people? I'm like, I didn't start hanging out with them because I wanted to be like a clout chaser. Like, mm-hmm. they DM'd me on Instagram. They said, oh, I love your band and I love all the bands you love. And I'm like, sick. Let's fucking hang out then. Like, yes, I listened to like all their music, like back when it was a big thing in 2017, 2018. Wait, who are we talking here? Like, like, like Ned Arb, Zubin, Lil Lotus, like all these people who are like 
some of my best friends. Yeah. But like people would look at that and be like, oh, it's just like networking shit. It's just like LA bullshit. I'm like, no, like I'd go up there, I go stay at Ned's house for the whole weekend, and I just hang out with everybody I can because I love kicking it with these people. Because like people look at them and be like, oh, they're rappers, they're blah blah blah. I'm like, but they all listen to the same fucking music we did growing up. Yeah, all that all yeah. the all the twenty seventeen SoundCloud. Yeah. All of that is they, they're all emo, emo kids, kids yeah. yeah. Literally, I'm like, yeah, they're great to hang out with. It's not just like some like LA bullshit. Like, and it's the same way with any band I, I come in contact with. Like, I'm like, I like hanging out with them because they're genuine people, and like it's fun. You know, it's a good time, and it should always be that. Not about like, oh, if I hang out with said said person, then like I'll get the tour offer. I'll I'll get the fucking Instagram yeah. post that'll make me blow up. Blah blah blah. Whatever. It's so transparent when yeah. people do that because like. All of Space Cowboy were all like hardcore kids. Like mm. I grew up volunteering from like age 14 to 19, running the Che Cafe in San Diego. Vegan, anarchist, I ran the zine table there all the time. I learned how to do sound there. I learned how to do everything there in a volunteer run, non-hierarchical collective. I grew up in that kind of scene where it was like very like the most like primal roots of like punk and shit. And that's like why Space Cow was also so political. Cause like that's the scene I grew up in. Like it, I went from seeing Dead Kennedys and JFA play when I was like 10 years old to like all of a sudden seeing Ceremony in 2009 in a hundred cap room and being like, this is where I belong. This kind of like DIY hardcore. And like, I just like dove into it. And of course like Space Cow is now a, a label band and the industry and blah 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 but like at our hearts we're still very much like that and you're it's not like you're on like you're on fucking sony no offense sony but like it's pure noise it's yeah yeah, yeah. you're still you're still with the good guys yeah, i mean and like that was always the thing with pure noise i was even like you'll never tell us what to do like before we signed i'm like don't tell us what to do don't tell me how to do my shit just like if we want to work together cool and that's how it's been forever i mean even coming down to like changing our sound every record because we're bored of what we did last record you know you know what is creeping in with labels i don't know any examples of actual labels but like i don't want to throw your label under the bus but like <laughs> hey you guys you need to do this on tiktok it's like yes i'll do tiktok if i want to do tiktok like yeah. no i i've decided i'm too old to do tiktok wait how old are you 28 i'm 36 <laughs> i've got <a> tiktok <laughs> But my thing is, doing, my though. thing is like I'm just I, I don't want to learn it. I don't know what's I going still on. Know what I doing. don't have. I, I made a TikTok account, posted one thing, and never posted again. Never mm -hmm. been on it since. It is interesting. TikTok comes up all the time on this podcast. It is interesting because it's what you what every bone in my body thinks will do well on TikTok doesn't. Yeah. So I'm like kind of interested in like is this just a shifting of people's brains for good or for bad? Like, so it's, I have no it's idea. A, it's a hive mind. Yeah, like I, I, yeah. the high quality shit, like when I put a podcast clip up, bombed. No. But it's like me doing something dumb on my front yeah. camera where I look like SpongeBob. Like, yeah, I mean, it's the mental. same shit with us. We'll like put, like, like anytime we tried it, it'd be like, oh, this is a funny little skit we can do, blah, 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 whatever. But then, like, the best video is me crowd surfing at our show in Philly and punching the fucking fluorescent lights and the ceiling panels out like as I go it's kind of cool though. It, it is cool but it's a shit VHS video yeah. from a cam from my, my cassette camera you know it's like you never know I kind of like that though lo-fi lo-fi coming back I need to ask some of my fucking questions because we're just we're just gabbing <laughs> um, but a lot of them came up so obviously you're on the Wii car tour now yeah Obviously, respectfully, your band is absolutely mental musically. Yeah. Like, it is fucking all over the shop. So, do you find, but I, like, so I know of you from you being hardcore kids. Yeah. Do you find there are certain tours or bands that you play with and the crowd just doesn't get it? Absolutely. All the time. It, yeah. That's like the thing is like, Space Cowboy is a band we've always been like, we play this weird music influenced by these old metalcore bands and we have like the stage presence to, to attempt to emulate that yeah. but what i found is they don't understand our like quick changes and fucking tempo changes but they like to watch us lose our minds on stage yeah. that's always been the thing is like that was fucking crazy y'all were insane on stage because like 
my thing personally when we do support tours was like people probably never heard of number 12 or daughters or like yeah. whatever that we take from or fear before the march of flames i'm like but if we go up there and we go fucking insane and taylor takes his bass off and chucks it in the air and catches it and ethan's throwing it behind his head like they'll remember that yeah as be like oh space cow was kind of crazy do you think that's why all our i'm gonna throw myself under the bus here like all us old people want to take you on tour because we remember those bands yeah, like I, I went to see those bands you know, i was like 13 or whatever yeah, and it was like crazy i've talked to a lot of people who are like yeah it's it's crazy to see that like throwback and like a lot of bands and i, I like that because like i said like we came from that like niche scene where like all these bands that like they want to bring up zeo poison the well yeah. fucking embodiment i'm mean, gonna yeah i love those bands because i'm a fucking music nerd yeah and i grew up being like what's the most like just niche elite like one demo one seven inch like screamo band or metalcore band i can find and be like that i love that shit did you ever fuck with uh circle takes the square yeah i i saw them play when i was yeah i was gonna say how old were you must have been... when, it, when it, they did a reunion oh, okay. i saw them play when i was like 17 i saw like them page 99 city caterpillar like any reunion band i could see and like while I was doing that, I was talking to a lot of like older people who'd be like, Yeah, I saw that band back in the day, like whatever. And I'm right. like, Well, I was like four. Yeah. <laughs> I did what I could. Yeah. I got played some shows with Circle Takes the Square in like two thousand could be two thousand three. Two thousand three I was on my Yeah. I the mean, more what? the more tempo changes and erratic yeah. weirdness the better. Well, I think decompositions came out. Like that was the era they were touring that, or was it as no, roots? It was roots, roots yeah. 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 Fucking record rocks. I remember, no. but I remember buying it and it being the first time I ever bought a CD that wasn't in a case. And I was like, this is made from paper. Yeah, it's a, like, it's a digipack. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, I was amazed at the time. I was like, wait, yeah. this is art. No, that, was, that was my thing, like listening to that band, like hearing Roots and then hearing Decompositions. I'm like, bands can change how they sound, yeah. dude. What the fuck? I mean, you guys, you guys have. Yeah, I mean, that's always been our thing in mean, the first two years we were very grindy very yeah. math core then we were like kill switch engage poison the well wannabe then we were like post hardcore and even like with like the new album we've even switched again this is why we're segueing into yeah. this you just finished recording <laughs> yes so we just did our album with uh matt squire he did a fever you can't sweat out yeah All Time that's Low. crazy is it Really cool guy because he's got the pop sensibilities, but he's a DC hardcore dude. So like we They we, often are. Yeah. And it's sick. Um we went to him with this idea of like we wanted to take what we had done with Romance of Affliction, but imbue like the indie rock that me, Ethan, and Timmy grew up listening to. To the Cinema Club, Interpol, Block Party. Oh, like my wow. first show ever was Interpol. Block Party on the Silent Alarm release and The Bravery. It was the first show I ever went wow. to. I was like a little kid. Um, so we no wanted- wonder the UK loves you because <laughs> thinking about it, it's very UK. Yeah. And and like for us, we're like, all right, well, we did this like post hardcore, like Seosin, Under Oath thing. What do we want to imbue now? And we kind of came up with this idea of doing cabaret, burlesque, and putting that dancey indie rock that's like so infectious into metalcore. So like we like worked out this whole thing and we were like we planned it all out. We like made like and then we went to like Isaac from Knock Loose. And we're like, Isaac, once again, we have a crazy idea for you. Yeah. Can you help us do this thing that we wrote half the album? We went to him to write the other half. And just wrote some of the most like wild songs we've ever written. Like songs that have breakdowns as well as like 1930s like swing riffs in them. Wow, yeah, and, that's and, pretty fucking number and, 12 yeah, craziness. We just, like, committed to this thing with him. So, like, yeah, like, so then when it came to going to Matt Squire, we're like, you did the most famous burlesque cabaret influence thing ever. The, big, the, can't big, the biggest fucking song yeah. on earth yeah. for uh, 10 years. And so, like, when we were talking to Pure Noise, we're like, we would love to work with whoever did that album. And Jake is like, well, coincidentally, he hit me up a month ago asking to work with y'all and i'm like wow sick that's fucking that's cool it so like we like really got to like stretch out play around we timmy it like knows how to play piano and do composition so we have like jazz club smoky femme fatale fucking interludes 
and like Shit, all, we're you like, can go nuts on the videos yeah. for those oh. as well. Oh, I have it all. Oh, planned you've out. got that plan now. Yeah. Um. So like, it was like really cool to like have another album where we played around and be like, cool, we're gonna make a lot of double hi hat snare dance parts work that goes straight into a breakdown. Nice. It's gonna, it's gonna fit, you know. And so we, Isaac helped with this as well. Yes. Oh my god, what a fucking combo, dude! I mean, that's such a cool yeah. combo. He produced our last album. Yeah, um, I know. Oh, yeah, I know yeah. that much. And um, and he's like, you know, like not to throw one of the best, but he's like been like, a, I know your band. I've been a fan for like since we were putting out Seven Inches, bef- like way back in the day. He's like, I like. He's always the the person that like is like, you need to never lose who you are. Keep that. That grind shit in there. Keep the space cowboy in there, and we'll also like weave in everything else. He's the fucking man. Dude, he's so good. So, I mean, he's a musical genius. Musical genius. So in tune with like the underground. That yes. it's crazy. It is. I mean, and for how big Knock Loose is, to, to still like have him just be this like almost like borderline eccentric, just like music lover to the max degree. Yeah, I love him like to death. I love writing. I'll I'll never write an album without him. Yeah, I feel like you can hear, like, obviously not discrediting yourselves, but on the last album, you can hear, like, uh, Isaac's had a little fucking nod in that bit there. Well, because he'll even do funny things, like there's a song on the new album that's super Dillinger influenced. He's like, I'm going to write the most fucked up thing I can just so AJ, our drummer, has to try to play it. And it's, it's insane. It's like, I told them, I'm like, I won't do vocals over this. Just so you know, this this one part, I'm not gonna touch. Is it, it a, is it a Dillinger blast? Yeah, it's a. Dun, Are you not touching it because you want to leave it open or because you? No, can't because learn. I don't want to fucking try to write anything over there. All right, we we did a song with a Dillinger part in it. I'm gonna throw Drew under the bus here. We did a song with a Dillinger part in it. We come to rehearse before the first tour that we're playing that song. The song is actions, not words. The beginning of it has a proper. It's a Dillinger blast, yeah. Dillinger section. And uh, obviously incredibly difficult for the drums. Get to band practice. Motherfucker hasn't learned it. And I had to play it like, I reckon I had to play it 200 times yeah. in a row. And he still didn't get it and we don't play it. Yeah. Also, I need to shout out Paul, the drummer of Service Team, because on that tour that we did, he gave me an OG Calculating Infinity Dillinger Escape Plan shirt. He wore it all tour because I had been like punishing him about like old bands. And he's like, the last day, he's like, Connie, come here. I want you to have this. I've had it for for 20 something years. I want, it's time to pass it on. Wow. So in my bag right now, I have an OG Calculating Infinity shirt. And I'm just like, insane. Cause like, that band is a big part of why a lot of us play anything technical. Yeah. It's like, it's still in your skate. I mean, Calculating Infinity is fucking. Yeah. If it's probably not in my top ten, top five albums. It's in my top ten albums. Yeah. And it's like even going crazy on stage. My like, like if I hit this point, I've made it. Is the the mall headwalk video. Like if I could ever do that on stage, I'm happy. Here's why. Oh, this is very on topic. Do you think you would get away with it today? Because this is going to lead me into all sorts of questions. But um, did you see the royal blood thing the other day? Yes. What's your thoughts there? I mean, I don't know. Because, like, in hardcore, you know, you go on the stage, you tell people to fucking move, you insult them. It's, like, a thing yeah. in our scene. And even at our own shows, I will still front, ball, front flip off stage. If I like a band that's playing, I'll still crowd kill. Yeah. Still mosh. Still do it all. But there probably is a point that will come where I can't do that anymore without I think a lot coming, of headache. I think it's coming so soon. Like, I saw the, the... If anyone doesn't know, Royal Blood sort of went on stage. I'm going to preface this. Is a Radio 1. Oh, no, you won't get played on Radio 1 anymore. What, once a fucking year? Uh, it was a Radio 1 festival, which, to my knowledge, you don't get paid for. You get a very minimal fee, and it's just to sort of lovey up with Radio 1. Yeah. They play, they sandwich them. Royal Blood's a rock band. They sandwich them in between two, like, singer-songwriters. Royal Blood were just, like, making sort of jokes about the, st- about the crowd, mm. and then they, when they left, they flipped the crowd off. Now, I thought that was the most benign, passive, like, yeah. thing in the world. And the internet went mental. Like, they're so, oh, what is it? I kept saying entitled. So entitled. It's like, motherfucker. It's it's a show. I mean, I, I, that's been my thing with a lot of Europe, too. I'm like, 
they seem to like the set, but they don't move around. In America, mm. if you like a set, you're front flipping off the stage. Yeah. You're you're like piling on the vocalist. You know, you're going crazy. You're showing your support. I I just can't I can't couldn't get my head around the just the the majority of people saying, Oh, this is this is uncalled for. Like if I was in that crowd, no one from the crowd being offended, obviously. Mm. If I was in that crowd, I'd be so annoyed. I'd pay good money, blah, blah, blah. It's like, motherfucker, I saw Greg from Dillinger shit in a bag at Reading Festival say on stage, you're going to see a lot of shit on this festival today, so let me start it off. And he shit in a bag and he threw it into the crowd yeah. and everyone was like, yeah! Well, now you can't even flip off the crowd! Yeah, I mean, that's like the, the thing. I'm like... <sighs> I don't like the sanitization of shows. I mean, I thought you were going to say shit. No, I don't, want... <laughs> I don't like the sanitization of shit. Let me shit. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's there's like a thing, and then it's like the same way. Like, my dad grew up going to like Black Flag shows in the 80s. He's like, back then, it was just like fights. You'd just be punching people in the face. And it's the same thing with me. Like, my thing has always been like, I hate that the, in like this, this left or like, like part of the queer scene, everyone's like, no crowd killing. I'm like, Motherfucker, if I go to a beatdown show, I'm going to punch someone in the face right away. Mm. Like, I love it. I saw Unbroken Wings, and, like, I had, like, four people come up to me and say, you broke my nose. You gave me a fucking concussion. That was sick, you know? And it was like, that's part of hardcore. It's a hard one to navigate, though, because it's it, like, it is mostly within our own scene. Where there is the yeah. conflict, yeah, it's not like there's rat. There's not like there's like military dudes coming to the show. Yeah, it's all it's all of the left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's like a, it's like a tough thing because like even like for me with like if you like go farther to like other trans people, I'm like y'all are soft. I grew up fighting anybody who insult me on the street. I grew up not complaining on Twitter, but getting in fist fights in the middle of wherever the fuck I was because it's like I'm not gonna stand for disrespect. I'm going to do shit about it right here. But there's this growing, like, scene of people who just become really soft. And mm. they're just like, I just want to complain about it on the internet. I'm not going to do anything in the moment, but I'm going to act like I got the one-up because I made a, a viral tweet about it. I'm like, back back in my day, as young as I am, it was like, you fucking punch them in the face if mm. they do shit. That's the way it is. And it's the way it should be handled. And, like... So when it comes to like a lot of like the, the queer scene and stuff, like I don't necessarily vibe with like even people like who apparently are part of my own community. I'm just mm -hmm. like, why aren't you doing anything about anything other than like your anime profile picture complaining on Twitter? Do you think see I see I do see a lot of complaints, but I I often see the complaints from people who are it's just on behalf it would be like yeah. on behalf of yourself yeah. like a complaint. Yeah, I and I get that there's like a big movement to be like stand up but it's never where it counts. Mm. You know? It's like that social media shit when it's like well where were you in the moment? Here's a question then because I, I I do have a section on your identity as a mm. trans woman in heavy music because there's not that many of you. Um It's true. But while we're on that subject, what can like allies do, in your opinion, t to help without hindering it? Yeah, I, I feel like there's there's valid there's valid reasons to do this whole like stand for thing. Like I mean, like like and p propose your message. But like if you're in the moment and you see someone getting harassed and going down, like do something about it, mm. because. All it takes is somebody, especially from an outside party, stepping in to be like, and that will stop to be like, done, you know? And it goes beyond just being like, I support and put a bumper sticker on your car. Mm. It goes to like being- If anything, that's what, obviously I can't, sorry to cut in. If anything, that's kind of worse because it just riles up yeah. the people who are yeah. already riled yeah. up. It's like- so, so Space Cowboy, like, we get, like, death threats. We get people yeah, saying, gonna like, say, I'm gonna, we're going to fucking shoot up your show. We're going to do X, Y, Z to you. They never do. We they never that. do. They're Trust fucking, me. Yeah, they're, they're fucking cowards about it. I don't care. But, like, there's a notion that you have to go beyond that. It's like what I, what, like, is traditionally known as, like, praxis. What you can do about your personal beliefs in the moment. Mm. And that would be something like if you see someone getting harassed or some shit, like step in. And it's the same thing for like if you see a woman getting harassed, step in. 
Don't don't fucking watch from afar and be like, oh, women are so oppressed. This tweet, is terrible. Tweet, tweet about it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like, know what I saw today? This yeah. woman getting her fucking oh. ass kicked. Yeah, but like, why didn't you fucking step in? Like, anytime, even if I see, like, a gnarly verbal argument, like, me and people around me would, like, stance up and be like, all right, we're watching. If anything happens beyond what we think is, like, appropriate in that way, then you go over and be like, what the fuck's going on? Like, it's always about, like, applying your, like, personal beliefs to like real life scenarios and not just letting them exist in your head or on the internet. Yeah. And that's like the biggest thing is like, if you truly believe these things, make them happen in reality. Yeah. Do what you can. Like even, even if it's like you got a political belief, when I was 14, I was stealing the manager code from the fucking office depot and printing thousands of dollars of zines because that's what I believed to yeah. spread information. I can't tell you what I did. But <laughs> I did shit like that as well, but yeah. it's really illegal. But uh, yeah, I'm all for that. Yeah, it's I'm all for stealing from your work as yeah, well. Yeah. By the way, yeah, massive fuck, fan of that. Fuck that. Yeah, I mean, Whole Foods loves stealing from Whole Foods. Just uh, anywhere. I mean, this is obviously hypothetical. I'm lying. This is a joke. I'm obviously lying. <laughs> uh, but like anywhere they make me scan my own shit, you best believe I'm getting paid for my labor. Yeah, <laughs> like, absolutely. <laughs> I feel like there's a there's a big problem with this generation of like they say it but they don't live it yeah what's the point of saying something you don't live mm. fucking do it true let me take a hot little minute right now maybe 90 seconds to thank the newest sponsor of the downbeat podcast athletic greens ag1 by athletic greens is a foundational nutritional drink containing 75 different superfoods antioxidants and stress adaptogen extracts i have been taking all of the above in separate pills for maybe the last 10 years of my life i'm trying to improve my immune health i'm trying to improve my gut health i'm trying to improve my energy levels and i've been buying off amazon a bunch of different pills a bunch of different powders trying to take them on tour getting them taken off me at australia airport because they're like excuse me, sir, you uh, cannot take all of these erroneous pills into the country without us testing them. Now I don't have to do that. I take one scoop of AG1 by Athletic Greens with 250 milliliters of water in the morning. If I'm traveling, I use their amazing little travel packs. Everyone nicks them off me on tour. I feel great. I feel energized. Sometimes when I have it, I have it instead of a coffee in the morning. I'll push my coffee back to lunchtime. How mad is that? I just feel like it's doing something for me. I genuinely love the product. I'm so stoked that they're a sponsor of the podcast. If you are looking for a better way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and K2 and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com forward slash the downbeat. That's athleticgreens.com forward slash the downbeat. Check it out. Wait, what, right, while I'm on while I'm on the subject, have you ever had any shit from like other bands? Like, has it been? Obviously, the the easiest question is like, is it really difficult being a trans woman in music? But like, have you ever had like bands who don't fuck with you because of it? Never bands. So luckily, people within like hardcore and stuff have always been really accepting and cool. I've never had bands. Of course, there's like slip ups pronoun misses but i never yeah. like pointed out i'm like i don't care they'll learn as like as time goes on you is know? this is this is this people that knew you pre-transition when did you no. transition oh uh, eight years ago yeah yeah um no that's not that but this they just don't understand necessarily it takes time to warm up but i'll never be the person to be like day one like fucking don't call me that whatever you yeah. know like if it's like a homie and there's no malice let it slide and they'll learn on their their own you know yeah so because 2023, like, I feel like, and obviously I can't ever fucking relate, but I got a lot of trans friends. Yeah. Like, I feel like there was a small golden era, like maybe I want to say 2019 to tw late 2020, where it was like everyone on the on the like whole seemed to be really quite accepting. Yeah. And 2023. <laughs> Is absolutely fucking psycho. It, it is. I mean, like, I have my girlfriend texting me all the time, be like, this state just passed this anti trans law. They're making kids detransition. They're making blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I mean, I personally never get my hopes too up. I'm like, things will, things go in a pendulum. 
Swings mm. very far to one side and will always swing back to the other. And so, like, I'm always ready for the next thing to happen. And it's like that currently. I mean, there's a lot of places that are passing really gnarly anti-trans laws. A lot of that stuff going on in the U.S. currently. Florida's a big one. And, like... The banning of drag shows, which is, like... Well, you know what's crazy? is like, they did that in Nashville. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm legally allowed to perform in Nashville anymore. <sighs> what? But that's... I mean, that's the thing is like technically to the, the that's state. That's fucking insane. Yeah, Calling te- CU Space Cowboy a drag yeah, show. Technically <laughs> to the state, I would be considered doing drag. Did you see? Um, I thought this was cool, right? Because I, like, I'm incredibly, incredibly left leaning person, but yeah. I, like, I like to think I'm quite, I'm quite open minded and I'm quite skeptical about a lot of stuff. One band who I thought, and most of their fans are, most of their fans are absolutely insufferable, right? Yeah. It's Tool. Yeah. And a lot of their fans, I'm a, I'm a big Tool fan, but oh, I'm like, I call same. myself like a Tool apologist because their <laughs> fans are so bad. Rick and Morty, Tool, yeah. <laughs> like all of that shit where it's like the, like the people that like it suck so much it makes yeah. me not like the stuff. But I saw that when they played Florida. Yeah, when they played Rockville, he wore drag. Mm-hmm. And I was like, good for you, because that would have pissed off, I reckon, yeah. at least 60% of their fan base. Oh, He's been yeah. doing it for years, but like... I mean, it's the same thing Like that I feel like we'll play like Midwest or Deep South, and I'll go on stage and be like, go fuck 12, fuck the police, before we play Arm With Our Teeth. And I'm like, you know what? Like Ever since we first started touring outside Cali, I've always told the band members, I'm like, shit could happen. Mm. Get ready. I'm going to make a speech. Yeah. Get ready to fight. I mean, we, uh, we, we've also been doing the, the no cops for a while. The only thing we got, this, uh, you can probably relate to this. Like, there's a moment when you get like all the death threats. Like when Trump, when Trump was in, we got, we got all the death threats oh, for, yeah. from one of our records for the good night. All right. Yeah. All of that shit. Got all the death threats. And there is a moment where you're like, oh, actually this could actually happen. Then you do the first tour after that. Yeah. And you realize that, these would be assassins have a much easier job than any other assassin on earth because they can go to see you space cowboy.com or straight from the bath.com. Yeah. There is a list of every 500 yeah. capacity room. That I will be sat, <laughs> sat down in that. You could just take a fucking plea. You could just take a pop and still no one did yeah. it. And then you realize like everyone's yeah, full no, of they're, shit. They're, they're just they're cowards. I mean, it is like the internet and we've known this for so long. The internet allows a sense of power mm. for a lot of people. And, and, and it's good and bad power. It's empowering to people who can take photos, even for myself, and take photos from good angles, be like, damn, I look good. Post them. It also like good for anonymous people who want to be like, oh, I'm going to fucking get you. Like, you should be scared. And like, I'm not scared, but like, come, come find me. Yeah. Like, when we were in, uh, we played Denver the day after the Colorado Springs shooting. Oh, fuck me. And uh, I, I remember waking up and like 45 minutes away from me, there was like a mass shooting at a gay club. And like, so like I went on stage and like I, I wrote a word I will not say because this is going on YouTube on my stomach. And I said, hey, I'm sure y'all all heard about that. I just want to say. What did the letter begin with? What letter? F. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, and uh, I said, all right, I made a speech. I'm like, if, if any of you think I shouldn't exist, come get me, motherfucker. And I pulled my shirt up. And I'm like, that's my statement. I'm like, if you want me, come get me. God, girl, I don't even think like in in my head, I was like, you know, they didn't come for us, but right now the target is not on us, and there is actually fucking atrocities happening. So be careful, please. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna try my best, but I'm I mean, also don't not stop. Gonna, yes, don't yeah, stop yeah, I'm not gonna doing. stop. Stop doing me. Like that's like always my thing. I'm like, if shit happens. You deal with it in the moment. You I, do what you can. I always say, if you're going to do it for me, right, just come in. I'll even let you do it. Just come in. Just get me. Don't get everyone at the show. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's rude. Yeah. Just get me. <laughs> just just yeah. get me. I mean, that's how I feel. I'm like, there is a price to put on the line if you want to live your life to, to whatever magnitude you want to live it to. That's like the acceptance of. And it's even the same thing, like, when I used to struggle with drug addiction, it was the same thing. I'm like, I'm putting my life on the line every time I do this. What what drugs? Do you want, do you want to talk about yeah, this? That's fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I used to be 
really addicted to smoking Oxycontin. I actually overdosed two weeks after we recorded Romance of Affliction. I like flatlined. I had so, to be brought back. Um, very American problem, right? Yeah. yeah. Country's fuck. Yeah. It. It's terrible. So did you oh. say smoking? I would smoke it, yeah. Put on foil. With a straw, lay down in it. Don't sound, you sound like rem, you're reminiscing. Yeah, like, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, that's why fine. I was like, do you want yeah. to talk about this? No, 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 no. I mean, it's fine. Like, I've, I've been clean for months now. So, mm. like, I'm like, yeah. But I used to, like, struggle with it really gnarly. I mean, the Romance of Affliction, a lot of it is about, like, being a drug addict. And, and after that album, I kind of started the process of, like, getting clean after that overdose. Mm. And it's, this, it's the same thing. It's like, you take that risk. Like, if you want to live life, whatever it may be, and, you have to like be willing to like put your cards on the table and be like, this is it. And like for me, like with that shit, I wasn't willing to anymore. I'm like, it's not worth it. It's not worth it to keep testing this. And like, I'm not to say I haven't relapsed or dabbled since in like other substances, but there are certain ones where I'm like, it's not worth it anymore to like constantly daily use whatever it may be. Did you like so when you OD'd? Like, how far did it go? They had to Narcan me twice to bring me back. Fuck. I was just, like, on the couch, like, dying. Do you, remember, do you remember anything? No. I the, the first thing I remember is waking up and, like, like in a movie, like a fisheye shot of, like, my girlfriend, Taylor, and Ethan all, like, looking down on me. I'm like, what the fuck happened? Because that night I took 10 bars of Xanax and did a bunch of Oxy, and I'm like... 10 I, bars? Yeah, I just got, like... I my girlfriend went to work and I got terribly fucked up throughout the night. If I take half a bar before a flight, I'm like out for eleven yeah. hours. Oh, let me tell you, when I got I got clean off Oxy and Xanax legally, the same, by the way. Yeah, I got clean off Oxy and Xanax at the same time, and it was the worst feeling I've ever I, felt in my life. Yeah, I I like stopped like because I was prescribed it, but I like stopped using it because it really is a fucking slippery old. Oh. Now I just have like two drinks before I get on the plane. And yeah. Like oh, that, that's kind of what I did. I mean, I replaced a lot of that with like drinking. I'm like, it's a little bit easier to maintain. It's not quite as gnarly. It's still not great, but it's no, a lesser well, evil. That's the thing is like tomorrow it all starts for me. I'm going to stop day drinking. I'm going to only have three shots a night max and taper that down. I made a handshake deal with our uh, bassist or our guitarist, Timmy. And I'm, I'm like, he's like, I'm going to quit nicotine. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll quit day drinking. I won't drink before five, and I'll have three drinks max. Forever or being at home? Just to, like, reset myself. Because I was talking to, like, Andy from Weekend as Romans. He's like, you need to take time to reset and, like, do you. Mm. Stop focusing on, like, bands and everything like that. And just, like, take some time, reset. Because he did 90 days sober, you know. Yeah. And, and I'm like, that's crazy that you did that. He's like, no, it's great that I did that. Like, it's so nice. To like be able to like refine yourself and be like, I don't need whatever some su- substance it may be to survive. My thing is like, so I did the tour that we did before last. I only drank before days off, which was big for me because yeah. I would just drink every day. But w- I wouldn't drink. I wouldn't day drink because I couldn't play the drums. I'd drink. I'd start just before we played. I'd have like two beers. Yeah. Then after we played, I would drink until I fucking blacked out. Yeah. And it would get me through the boredom of tour yeah then the last tour sorry the tour before last i did just drinking before days off yeah mentally i was in such a better place like physically i didn't come back from tour like looking shot yeah and then i played so good but i was so fucking bored yeah that the last tour we did i went back to drinking had more fun but i played worse no that's my thing like I was like thinking about like I could stop drinking on this tour, but I'm like I'm exhausted. You got and one day left. Yeah, you might as well. yeah, yeah. And I'm like <laughs> I just want to have fun, and I'll go home and like I have three months off. It's an easier place. Yeah, You're like you can make yourself not oh, around. Yeah, I can't imagine quitting anything on tour. Imagine being in like the bus and be like, oh, I need a drink. Mm. And you're like, well, no. I'm, about, I'm about to do it. Yeah. So I, I've planned it though. I've had a look. I'm not an alcoholic. I've planned it. We've got, after the show with Architects, who are our boys, there is a day off. And then after Metallica, there's a day day off. So in my head, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to party like crazy on those yeah. two days. And then the rest of the time, 
it's going to be business. I don't want to be hung over playing with my sugar. Because yeah, no, absolutely. They might watch me and I'll shit my pants. Well, I mean, that's like, I've said that many nights this tour. Even last time, I'm like, I'm not going to get drunk because I got to go do this tomorrow. And I want to get on the ferry and be okay. And like, still ended up getting trashed in Belfast. <laughs> but, you know, there is that like notion of like, I feel like as I get older, I'm also like, I need to be more responsible. Mm. I need to at least make an effort. Yeah, I mean, when I was 28, I didn't even have those thoughts. So good for you. Yeah. It's coming. It's Your time's coming. What flavor of vape you got? Or is it weed? Do you smoke weed? No. Why don't you smoke weed? Too crazy. You want to know it's the ironic thing? Okay. I've done pretty much every other drug known to man, and I don't like weed. Yeah, me neither. I hate it. Yeah. It's not and I me. love everything else. There's, people, there's many people in our party who are like, oh, I love weed. They smoke weed all the time, you know, it's whatever. But for me, I'm just like, yeah, I love every other thing I've done. DMT to fucking whatever. DMT you know? so sick. Dude, I'll do DMT every day if I could. Dude, DMT. Well, I have a DMT vape at home. That's what we, our last episode of the podcast, that's what I was talking about. That's game changing. Yes. The just, San Diego chemists do well. Really? Oh, do you know yes. what? I'm going to be in San Diego later on yeah. in the year. I'd really like the plug. Obviously, this is a joke. Yeah, it's a joke. It's YouTube, none of it's real. YouTube. This Promise. Is, Parody. Yeah. The whole thing is parody. <laughs> um, all a sketch. We planned it all out. Exactly. What um, do you think there is an answer? Sorry to like. Obviously, you must get every single press question under the sun about being trans. No, that's fine. Do you think there is anything that is going to unite the two polar opinions? Because right now it's really, really, really conflicted, and I see like. It's not even that bad in our genre. You go on like a hip hop post mm -hmm. about like a trans woman, or there'll be like there'll be a story that come out like there's uh, like a rapper that's got with like a trans porn star or something like that. Like they come out all the time because this happens. Yeah, and the comments are so insane. In my head, I'm like, how? How? Not to obviously bum you out. Yeah, like, no, no, no. How we we have like. As a society, how are we ever going to be accepting? It's going to be time. Time is the ultimate answer. I mean, if you look at like history, it's like, yes, action. There's always going to be action. There's always going to be protests, blah, 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 whatever. But it's the ultimate infusion is just time. It's all it takes. Is you can't force society to change. It's the same thing when I look at like politics with like communism and stuff. I'm like, yeah. people were like, oh, do you want a revolution in your lifetime? I'm like, no, I don't. You don't. I want slow, gradual change. I want. I thought COVID was it. I thought we were going to have this big, <laughs> massive like reset. Didn't happen. It's, it's just. It doesn't. It. I don't think that change like that is good. I. I understand that a lot of people idolize revolutions, the Bolshevik Revolution, the French Revolution. They're like, oh, great change. I'm like, well, that's be before we had modern technology. It doesn't work so well in this day and age. Gradual change. Time is the ultimate ingredient. Do you know what I think? I think we went backwards because of COVID, though, because I saw all of the billionaire profits, all the profiteering, all the shit, and I just, I lit, being completely dumb and lefty, I was like, this is it, guys. There's no way the normal man, obviously, that's uh, mankind. Nobody's going to get me. <laughs> You're not going to get me. They're yeah. not going to get me. Obviously, mankind, like, I was like, that's it. You can't you can't sit back and watch what is happening and not be so furious. This is going to be it. We're mm. going to tear it all down. And everyone just got walked all over. Yeah. And now it's just like, oh, sorry. How much is it for my energy bill? Okay, mister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard because like, like I was saying, with like past shit that's happened, it's easier to stage a revolution before we had machine guns. Mm, true. You know? True. It's like easier to be like, we're going to overthrow the government and put whatever we want in. We're going to kill the czars. We're going to fucking have our tale of two cities we moment. We do it with a knife. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going to do it with a few muskets and, and some couple, a couple blades. And now yeah. it's like, well, you got to overthrow governments that have nuclear weapons. Yeah, and the other team have most of yeah. the guns. Well, that's always been my thing is like, people are like, oh, you're, you, you have to be like pro, like anti-gun or whatever. And I'm like, no. Almost every one of my friends that's like super left his pro gun yes absolutely i mean if they have guns i want guns yeah that's how it should be if like if you're a true like leftist like a true like hard left 
If they have weapons, we should have weapons. I do feel like, obviously, I live in the UK and we had one one guy went, walked into a school and shot a load of people with handguns yeah. and we just had a blanket ban and we've never had it again since. So I do fully understand that it would work mm. and it should work. But I think you couldn't even do it in America. You banned no. them, everyone would just literally go no. and kill the president. That's, yeah, it doesn't... Don't it's, it's, take away my ads. It's not... <laughs> <laughs> it's not a feasible thing for America. And it's fine. If the landscape is weapons, get a weapon. Yeah. It's just the way it is. Like, it, it's it's an unfortunate thing that we have such a mental health crisis and such a, a polarization that we have things like mass shootings. It's a terrible thing. But I don't think that that should be the thing that makes it be like, all right, well, take all the fucking guns away. It's, it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. We have... Even where I'm from, you know, we have, like, so many weapons. I used to have a gun. All these things. And putting a ban will not stop anything. Yeah. You're going to get them through other means. The same way that we get drugs and things from wherever. If I had a gun, though, I would definitely be dead. No, oh, that, that's right, why my like, gun got taken away. Yeah, I would. There's, not, there's been multiple times in my life when I've gone, God, if it was easier, I would have done it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Believe me, the, the time I got my gun taken away, finally, I was like, I had it like out on the table like this. And my girlfriend came home. She's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I broke the lock off the box. And I've been playing with the gun. Yeah. And she's like, all right, we're getting rid of it. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> and, and we haven't had one since. That's the, there is a fair argument to be made against like mental health, people with mental health problems like me. Like I'm bipolar. I have chronic suicidal ideation. Like I shouldn't have one readily accessible. Mm. But I definitely want one if there was ever to be a action of tyranny or a revolution. I to definitely want, yourself, I want yeah. my gun then. Absolutely, you know. I uh, yeah, actually, I just wouldn't be allowed one even if we were allowed. They'd go look at the medical records. Nope, not See, you. We don't do that shit in America. See, I had to. I had to like fucking. I don't know if this is legal, but fuck it. I had to like threaten my doctor this morning for yeah. like. So I, as I said, I go on tour on Monday. Tomorrow's my last day, though, because I'm going to London. And I just, like, yesterday realized that I didn't have my medication. Yeah. My, my anxiety medication. Oh, you got anxiety? Shut up. Mm. Um, <laughs> and I was like, because I checked, I phoned the pharmacy. It was supposed to have been done last week. Hasn't been, like, refilled by the doctor. Spoke to the doctor's thing. And they were like, oh, you need a new GP appointment. And it's like, well, actually, now I'm going to go away without this. In my, in my, like, because I couldn't get through them on the phone because we've got a national health crisis. Yeah. I, had to, I had to, like, message them and just be like, just so you know, I'm going away now without this because of you and anything that happens is your, it's your fault. fault. Yeah. <laughs> and just like that last ditch, like, yeah. Hopefully they come well, through and fucking give it to me. It's the today. same thing with the US. I have friends who've been on anti anxiety benzos since they're 15. I'm like, if you ever couldn't get your prescription, they could die. Yeah, and or you'll go somewhere else. Like, I'm already thinking, like, oh, yeah. I'm gonna have to just. Obviously, I'm not gonna go too mental, but I'm just, I'm gonna have to drink if something yeah. bad comes yeah. up. I'm not that bad. It's just certain, sometimes I'll just be like, oh, that's a panic attack happening. Let's yeah. just yeah. nip that in the bud. Yeah, I mean that's the way it should. Like I, medication. Like when I went to a psych, they put me on antipsychotics, and I went on. I had a manic episode for two and a half weeks. Because of the anti Beginning anti psychotics. What what was it? I don't remember the name of it. Um, but I just remember like my girlfriend was like, Please stop. Stop taking them. I'm like, No, the psych said I have to take these pills to like get be better. And uh, after that, I'm like, I haven't gotten any medication since. I'm like, I'm not gonna do it. It's like cause they'll just throw you shit and be like, try this. Yeah, Mark. See if it works. And it's like, cool, you didn't warn me that I'd be on a manic episode for two and a half weeks. That was my my worst one was like, mine came from like, obviously, fucking trauma dump. I had a real hard time in my life. Oh, baby. Um, and I wasn't sleeping because of it. And the doctor prescribed me an antidepressant and told me that it was going to help me sleep and then told me to take it at night time. Right? Yeah. Then I, I took this, started taking this antidepressant and it would keep me up all night and it'd be like as if I was like on Molly. Yeah. And I was like, is this going to stop? And they were like, yeah, yeah, it will stop after two weeks. It didn't. Yeah. It's suicidal ideation, all this shit. Oh, yeah. Then I go through the, the like, 
I went on WebMD for the thing, and it's like, must be taken in the morning. It's like, my doctor told me to take it at, at night. night. Yeah. It was my, and it, he was giving it for me for depression that was coming from not sleeping. And then, te- like, telling me it completely backwards. It made things so much worse. Yeah. It could have no. been so much it, worse. It's It sucks how poorly people with, like, mental health things are treated because, like, even in Cali, we have such a big problem with Xanax that, like, I go to them and hey, I have debilitating anxiety. Like, I don't leave the house very much. Like, please help me. They're like, here's Benadryl. We can't give you... We can't Benadryl? Give you, yeah. They're like, Sometimes we, I'll take that to go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, we can't give you Xanax because of your history of abuse with it. We can't give you anything. I'm like, but you'll give me the antipsychotics and like mood stabilizers that make me go crazy. Yeah. But not the thing that like I know works for it because I've taken it like it's supposed to be taken before. Yeah. Just don't give me too much of it. Yeah. Make me come back every fucking week. Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, if you just prescribe that, I'll take them just for panic attacks. I don't yeah. That's what I'm currently, yeah. that's what I'm waiting on today yeah. is Valium. And it's yeah. like, it's only in an emergency. Yeah. I'm fucking a grown grown up yeah and like i'm past my stage of abusing this shit like if you just prescribe it to me it will only be for what it's meant for i'm sick of going to my girlfriend and be like i need out of him because like i'm having a panic attack right now and having to take her medication if you didn't have her you'd go and fucking get drugs yeah i would just hit on my dealer and be like give me fucking a and then bottle. you end up and then you end up with fucking yeah, fen and, and yeah, then you're dead yeah exactly and that's how it goes it's it's sad do you want do you want to st- Talk about something nicer. I'm we just to went talk from, about whatever. We yeah. just went from the, the trans plight straight yeah. into drug addiction. Yeah. It's like that's pretty fucking pretty heavy. Um, I've got a new section, which is uh, sometimes it goes well, sometimes it doesn't. Which is asking AI to write a fan fiction about oh, a CU yeah, space cowboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, have you got any like in jokes? Okay, or so any? we have one that Timmy Moreno is the king of misinformation. He's the king of saying something okay. is proven false later. We also have a completely ironic thing about the earth is flat. Oh, okay. Because is- we started listening to podcasts, Alan Drives, and just listening to like the psychotic, like, earth is flat. Have you ever done we the- live in a dome. Have you ever done the um, Sasquatch ones? Yes. Pretty fucking good Dude, podcasts. I listened to this. I'm a believer. <laughs> I listen to this um, YouTuber uh, called Decoding the Unknown, and he does all, he's like a skeptic, but he does a breakthrough, a cold reading, so people write him a script and he reads it all, and it gives us thoughts as they go along of like Sasquatch, Loch Ness Monster, like all that shit. That's we never went to the moon. Sick. Okay, well, I'm going to write me a fan fiction about the band CU Space Cowboy, believing in flat earth. Comma, Timmy is lying. <laughs> sometimes this works and it's perfect and sometimes it doesn't. But Simon will edit the ones that don't work. There you go. The thing we might get. <laughs> See you space cowboy from Cowboy Bebop. Yes. Yeah. Nice. So he, it's like you guys are my age, but you're not. <laughs> well, I grew up watching Toonami. It starts good. That it knows who you are because ah, oh, I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're good. They're really, really nice. AI is being really <laughs> yeah. nice. This is scary. <laughs> this is fucking great. I'm just we got to wait for because he's he, she, they still writing. Yeah, the AI, the AI. Did you just say they I? The AI. Oh, uh, they AI. They AI. <laughs> they AI. AI. <laughs> That's what they should change it to. I mean, I could start reading and it's going to come up. I've just got to double check. Nothing absolutely insane is going to come up. <laughs> um, like, this is perfect. Once upon a time in the bustling city of San Diego, the hardcore band CU Space Cowboy found themselves embroiled in unexpected controversy. Controversy, whatever, wherever <laughs> you're from. They had gained a reputation for their chaotic live performances and thought-provoking lyrics. Ooh. But now they were about to embark on a journey that would challenge their beliefs and test their friendships. <laughs> it all started when the band's bassist, Timmy, developed a... Then- Timmy play bass? He used to. Yeah, I was so, going to say. Yeah, he used to play bass. AI fucked up, you're never yeah, going to get yeah, us. Yeah. It all started when the band's bassist-ish, Timmy, developed an obsession with conspiracy theories. <laughs> One day, he stumbled upon a video that claimed the earth was flat. <laughs> Fascinated by the idea, Timmy began delving deeper into the rabbit hole, convinced that he had discovered a hidden truth. He couldn't help but share his newfound beliefs with the rest of the band. 
Initially, CU Space Cowboy dismissed, dismissed Timmy's claims as an elaborate joke. They laughed it off, assuming it was just another one of his wild ideas. However, as weeks went by, Timmy became increasingly insistent, bombarding the band with a flood of articles, videos, and diagrams attempting to prove his case. Would this happen? <laughs> See, it's AJ who's the prime conspiracy theory man. Oh, well, Timmy is Timmy now. Tim is Timmy, absolutely. The other members of CU Space Cowboy, however, were not convinced. They knew that science had established the Earth's roundness centuries ago, and they couldn't understand why Timmy was so adamant about his flat Earth theory. Nevertheless, they decided to indulge him, if only to humor their friend and see where this journey would take them. This is fucking long. That's right, crazy. One fateful day, the band sat in their cramped tour van. It's a bus now, actually, AI. Eh? Mm-hmm. En route to a gig in Los Angeles. Timmy had his laptop open, presenting a slideshow filled with dubious evidence supporting his flat earth claims. Vocalist Connie, renowned for her outspoken personality, <laughs> couldn't resist the temptation to challenge him. Can you can you read just read this for me? Just oh. Timmy, come on. How can you seriously believe in this? There's a wealth of scientific evidence proving the earth is round. <laughs> Connie argued, frustration evident in her voice. Timmy leaned forward, his eyes alight with fervor. But have you considered that this is all a conspiracy, a grand cover-up to hide the true nature of our world? (laughs) As the debate grew more intense, tensions rose within the van. CU Space Cowboys drummer AJ tried to mediate, reminding everyone that they were friends first and foremost. But their arguments continued, threatening to tear the band apart. It wasn't until they arrived in Los Angeles, the venue looming in the distance, that a solution presented itself. A renowned astrophysicist (laughs) (laughs) happened to be giving a lecture at a nearby university that very (laughs) evening. (laughs) CU Space Cowboy decided to attend, hoping that the scientist's expertise would finally put an end to their disagreement. The lecture hall was filled with eager students and curious minds, their anticipation palpable. As the astrophysicist took the stage... A hush fell over the crowd. The band members found themselves captivated by the speaker's eloquence and the evidence he presented, all supporting the Earth's roundness. CU Space Cowboys sat in awe, their eyes opened to the overwhelming evidence and their faith in science reaffirmed. Timmy, overwhelmed by the clarity of the presentation, realised the flaws in his belief and to the extent that he had fallen into a conspiracy-laden rabbit hole. After the lecture, the band members gathered outside the venue, reflecting on the journey they had undertaken. Timmy felt a mix of relief and embarrassment realising he'd only been lying to himself all along. The band, however, embraced him. (laughs) That's crazy that AI just wrote all that. Other than getting, like, shit wrong on Wikipedia, which proves that, like, the the info has to be there. It's flawed. But, But, like, it's come up with stuff about your lyrics, your stage presence, like... That was kind of cool. Yeah, that's AI. crazy. <laughs> Good um, job, AI. But don't kill us in a robot war. Yeah, don't Skynet us, please. Um, we got to do one last thing and then we're done. All right. We've got to curate your dream festival. Oh. And I'm going to talk you through it. It's okay. going to be nice and easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, where on... Uh, well, where, where would your dream festival... So, the only rule is that CU Space Cowboy is playing. Yes. There's no other rules. It could be anything. It doesn't matter if it's completely not able to happen. It's like as if you woke up from a dream and you went, okay. hey guys, the, the Earth's flat and I had this crazy dream and here's a festival. Okay. so Where I, would it take place? Well, obviously I put it in San Diego because it's close to me. I could just be like, I'm going to wake up and go there. Are we talking about bands playing too? Well, I'm, yeah, but I'm going to oh, yeah. I'm gonna lead you into this. I would just do San Diego. Weather's great. Outdoors or? Outdoors. Is there a place? No, no, actually, okay. I do it indoors, but it had to be a massive building. Are you, is it custom building a building for this? Yeah, yeah I'm going to build a custom building for this. It's going to be like 2,000 cap. Just nice. Nice sound system. Yeah. What's the decor? I'm going to do old theater. Nice. Yeah. I had that in my head yeah. anyway. When you I, want, said I, want, that. I want opera boxes and shit. Is there a particular theater that you want to just steal and pop that in San Diego? That could happen. There's a lot of those theaters. I can't think of one that comes to mind immediately, but I want that vibe. I want it to be classy. No. You know, have you ever been to Coco in 
London. Mm-mm. It's a good one. Yeah. Is it like that? I want like Roy- red. royal red. Carpet. Yeah, yeah. I want. Like, yeah. I want. I want the red red curtains. I want everything. Opera yeah. boxes, filigree everywhere. Yeah. I would do that. Even if I have to custom build it. I'm right. Do we're, that. we're custom building it. Yeah. Two thousand cap. Um. What is the catering? The catering would be a amazing vegan Mexican food, like ensemble. Just anything Do you, you have could a want. specific place in mind they could cater it, or you got a specific? No, dish? I'm gonna I'm gonna take all the great taquerias and burrito spots from all of San Diego and be like, you're gonna make your own fucking tacos or burritos or whatever you want. Is there a, what's the what's the good vegan one? Is there like Gracias a, Madre is great, mm. um, and Fatties is great too. Um, but I'm just gonna take a conglomerate of them everywhere, from like the nice end places to like the the not as nice places, but that have the best food ever. Nice. The okay. way the San Diego way. And what's your accommodation? Everybody just eats as much as they fucking want, and you get whatever you want on your rider. All I want open bar. Open bar. Open bar. Yes, absolutely. Open bar. I want everyone to have a great time. You got a particular whiskey that you want? I want... Okay, so this is going to sound bad because this is my favorite whiskey to drink. It's not nice, but I want Evan Williams. Mm, that's my best friend. Okay. As anybody in this band will tell you, Evan Williams is my best friend. Best cheap whiskey you can get that tastes the best. You want the, you want the cheap stuff? I want the Kentucky okay. fucking bourbon. Where are you staying? Stay in my house. You're going to stay at your yeah, house? Yeah, I'm going to be 15 minutes away, ideally. Easy. And just be like, okay. I'm going to go back to my place. Um, who? Where is CU Space Cowboy playing on the bill? Are you, you know, got a particular time that you enjoy playing? I'm going to say, like, at festival, yeah. if it starts at noon, I want to play at seven. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. the right answer. Yeah. And There's maybe two bands after you. Yeah, yeah. There's the headliners after us, and it's all good. Okay. Who's headlining? Modest Mouse playing only This Is A Long Drive, Lonesome Crowded West, and building something out of nothing. Or nothing out of something. That's a long tag. Yeah, but that's what, that's who's... They're, they're playing those albums only. Nice. Massive Attacks right before them. Wow. Playing Mezzanine. Fuck yeah. I'll in be its there. entirety. I'd be there. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think about the, uh, the Banksy rumors? Is it Massive Attack? I don't know. Nobody knows who Banksy is. He's always wearing a hood. Yeah, everyone thinks his... it's the guy from Massive Attack. Yeah, and I like know. It's pretty fucking good evidence. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. But, I mean, if if he does his street art thing plus trip hop, good for him. Oh man, he's fucking raking it. Yeah, in. absolutely. Doing Massive Attack as your side gig because <laughs> you're too busy like making literal millions. Yeah. I don't know. And then see you, Space Cowboy. So, is there anyone heavy on the lineup? Zayo's playing. Playing where blood and fire bring rest, and um, Fear Before is going to reunite to do Auto Hot People Shake. So this back. is a fucking two thousand and four festival. Yeah, right? absolutely. And uh, you know, I could probably find a couple other heavy bands to put on there that I would like. But most of my favorite bands, they're not heavy. What about a smaller band that you think needs more recognition that you can give a lifeline to? Be I put Omerta on there for sure. Yeah, and Foreign Hands. Foreign Hands is so good. Yes, best modern metalcore band. And they don't sound modern. That's why. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> That's I'm like, yeah, they sound like Poison the Well, yeah. and it's sick. We toured them a couple of times. I'm like, this is exactly what I want. I'm having a real Poison the Well revival at the moment. Where I just go. I haven't gone back to it for maybe ten years, and I can't remember what it was. I was in Japan. No, I was. Li- I left Japan, and I and I listened to Tear from the Red, and I was like. I feel like I'm going for a breakup and it ends up I just missed Brendan from Counterparts. <laughs> 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 no, I was listening to Poison the Well and it was just like, oh, sick. Yeah. Can Poison the Well play? I don't want to put words in your mouth, but can they play? Yeah, they can play. They're playing opposite of December, front to back. I, I, To be honest with you, I only take opposite and tear from the red. and then I'm the same way. Yeah. This, the other stuff, it's actually, mm, you come before you, I don't mind. But like the production on versions ruins it for me yeah i mean it was a weird time in music I mean, it's the same thing that a lot of bands from like back then like digital stuff was becoming more prevalent it's like mm. oh like so like people are playing around with things there's a couple albums i'm like i wish this sounded more like seeing them live yeah you know and i've even talked to producers from back in the day they'd be like yeah like so and so band greatest band in the world but like in that experimental period shit didn't pan out in the, that way that should have especially like experimenting like you said with digital stuff have you ever 
there's this period of movies of like around about the same time actually or just like mm, late 90s early 2000s yeah. where everyone switched to digital for a while and because at that point digital wasn't 4K but they shot in digital yeah the movies now look bad forever because oh. you can't upscale it whereas stuff that was done in film yeah can be upscaled yeah. to 4K so you watch like the Godfather and it looks better than uh, watching yeah. like American Pie or whatever yeah it's it's always and they're that... exactly the same level of good film <laughs> It's that weird time of technology where it's like, it's the same way that we are with like AI nowadays. I look at like AI art and I'm like, looks cool, but weird. I hate it. It's like, it, it's so uncanny valley that you're just like, what? It just looks what? like I took mushrooms. Yeah. What is this? I watched a trailer for a, there's like a whole AI thing of Wes Anderson does Lord of the Rings. And I'm like, it's a cool concept. But, like, anytime I look too closely at anything, I'm like, this is just fucking bizarre. I did um, I did a tweet when all those were going around and people didn't like it that much. So I just said, AI prompt Wes Anderson's a Serbian film. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, no one's brave enough to make that no, one. No, <laughs> absolutely not. Um, it's a weird thing because, like, me as, like, a graphic designer, like, I do creative director work for bands as, as like, my other income... I'm like, will this eventually put me out of business? Mm. You just be like, plug in an AI. Be like, I want the art from a second story window meets fucking. Fuck heavy. me, I haven't heard that band name in <laughs> so long. It meets like Heavy Heavy Lolo's album art. Like, that's what it is. I'm like, well, that's what I do. Like, am I going to be out of a job? Uh, I think hopefully it just gets too samey. My annoyance with it is not like I. I like people being able, like yourself, being able to like, well, th here's something in my skill set I can't do. Let me draw from something else. Yeah. But like, when I was sold on AI, I thought it was going to be luxury space communism for everyone. Yeah. Like, we're we're going to automate the banks first. Yeah. We're going to automate this. It's like, no, we come for no, it's gonna, artists. It's, it's, it's art. <laughs> And fucking deep fake porn. Yeah, and when mu when they come when they do it, I mean they're already starting to do it well yeah. for music. Like I know from looking at f when the people who think that they they will do some AI art and they're like, look what I've made, and then everyone's like, oh wow, yeah, amazing! It's, it's like you haven't done anything. Yeah, when that shit. comes from music, when someone is able to write architect style chorus with uh, Gojira breakdown, blah blah blah, AI throws it up and then they put it up and everyone's like, oh, that's amazing. Like, yeah. Especially metalcore fans, no offense, but you suck. <laughs> but like, they were just going to be like, well, that's that then. I don't have to buy music or support music because I, I mean, can just make my own with a computer. It, it, it's, a, it's a thing. I, I think especially as like metalcore, so like, here's my thing. I'm glad metalcore is having this big moment right now. This move towards like more overly produced metalcore, it's like cool and it's advanced the genre to like a wide plethora of people but at the same time i'm like i miss the hardcore it's stagnant. i miss like you watch like old converge shows yeah. it's like it's crazy it's like it's it's it, it, they're playing the most like advanced like thing that like helped push this genre so far but it's like just in a basement mm -hmm. it's like it's the sickest thing to me and it's the same thing with ai it's like yeah if that becomes a thing and it's like it gets more generic it's like you got the feldman boom here and like everything falls into place i'm like what was what's the point of making music that's heavy anymore. yeah i feel like people will get fatigued with it i'm yeah. already fatigued with like modern metalcore production like yeah. to the like foreign hands when that came out and and even like chamber when yeah. when that came out and the, the snare drum wasn't the snare from paramore riot yeah, and i was yeah, like yeah. wait a minute that's a snare from 2003 yeah. let's fucking yeah. go it's, it's sick there's a lot of bands that will that still do that kind of stuff but they're Bands, bands. They're bands that people like me and you appreciate, but the general yeah. public doesn't understand. Like, Chamber Sick, that's combining fucking converged metalcore with hardcore. Mm. It's awesome. Yeah. Forehands are doing throwback. It's awesome. Like, throwback, like, metalcore. But the general public's not going to latch on to that. Because oh, they're like, who the do. fuck is, what the fuck is opposite of December? Yeah. Also, know. the weird thing about opposite December as well is like, it's raw. Like, yes. The drums are yeah. th real, yeah. which is not yeah. a metalcore thing. I mean, that's the thing. Even like when we went to like Mixwave or like we made very clear that like we want this shit to sound like raw. It needs to have that gnarly energy. Yeah. It, it, I don't want it to be overproduced. I don't want it to be crazy. I want it to have that 
that nature of like the stank. Yeah, leave a bit exactly. of the stank. Yeah, in. Leave, leave it in. Like distort things a little bit too much. Fuck it, I don't care. Mm. Drums don't need to be triggered and programmed. Like Edge is gonna play everything live for you. Like just, just a little bit of slop is good. Yeah, yeah. I love and it. Even especially like, in your kind of music where it is just like throw a bunch of shit around. Yeah, and and, and then that's the thing. Like even like. When AJ was recording, we were having to like redo parts on the fly. It's like, oh, AJ record that a little bit differently. Okay, cool. Adapt. Nice. Survive. You know, don't yeah. don't don't fix it. Don't put fake drums in there. Like, we'll adapt. We'll make it work. Nice. You know. Cool. This is the cool shit. This is why we do the Dream Festival, because we went off on a fucking million tangents. Yeah. <laughs> What's your ideal after party? After <laughs> your dream festival. Um so I uh, funny enough, this is what happened at Slam Dunk. At the last day, there in the artist artist bar tent, there was just a dance party. Then club hits, nice. free drinks. Nice. All the, the stronghold you could drink, essentially. That's what I would do. I'd be like, no more guitar music, no more nothing. Just club hits, everybody goes, gets hammered, has a good time. Good party. That's the best and time. And then you're 15 minutes from home. Yeah, then I'm just going to go home and fall asleep. Sleep it off. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> got anything you want to say? No. That's you, it. I you, mean, we were talking for an hour and a half, so. Well, yeah, you got we got everything done. You ain't got any statements. You can say a statement right to that camera if you want. You don't have um, to. Should have. I don't know. Should make have make, make metalcore hardcore again. There that's go, that's my big statement. Thank you for coming yeah. on. Of course, my pleasure. Thank I'll, you for having me. I'd love to have you back. Yeah. Next time you're over. Absolutely. Fuck yeah. yeah. Enjoy your show tonight. Yeah. I'm gonna try, and then I'm gonna get on plane. Eleven hour flight to LA. Let's get the fuck home. And then when's your next tour? Three weeks from now. Or three months from now. Not weeks. Is it three right? months. It, it is going to be announced by the time this comes out. I don't know. It will. This is going to come out in like yeah, a month. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, so I'll just say it. And if we have to edit, we have blah, blah, yep. blah. But we're, um, we're going to be direct support for Nothing Nowhere. Nice. And uh, it's also on the tour of Static Dress and Mood Ring. Oh, my God. That's a crazy tour. That's such a good tour. Yeah. Just yeah. had Static Dress was the last guest. So it's, 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 oh, really? Yeah. You're Dolly? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ollie, Ollie and Sam. Oh, that's But sick. it's not come out yet. Yeah. yeah it yeah. will have been out by the time you guys are watching this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love Side Dress and I, and, uh, you know, me and Ollie did vocals on Nothing Nowhere's album. So mm. it's like cool. And it should be a really sick tour. It's our first like, like tour. We're not just like opening slot, you know, for a minute. So I'm and ready. And it's like, it's. It's the perfect tool. Oh yeah, I mean, to to nothing nowhere us sag dress like mood ring like that's like a a crazy amalgamation of like two metalcore bands. You got nothing nowhere and you got mood ring doing the new metal things. So yeah, it's gonna be sick. Yeah, that tour will be big. Good for you. Yeah, I hope it goes well. Uh, enjoy your show. Goodbye. Oh, thank you. <laughs>